I'm gonna give you three seconds to guess which disease has had the biggest impact on human history. The answer, malaria. I'm Dr. Jennifer Gardy. Join me as I take a look at some of the oldest struggles in our history, our fights against disease. This is Sick History. Time and time again in ancient texts, we see descriptions of malaria-like illness and of our efforts to prevent mosquito bites. Humans have known that mosquitoes are trouble. The ancient Egyptians ate lots of garlic to ward off these airborne pests, and it's even believed that Cleopatra slept under one of the first bed nets. Around the same time, people were starting to suspect that swamps and wet ground, the perfect breeding sites for mosquitoes, were causing fevers. In fact, the word malaria comes from the Italian malaria, or bad air. Peruvian healers were grinding up bark from the chinchona tree, nicknamed the fever tree, to treat an illness that looked a lot like malaria. In the early 1600s, Spanish missionaries brought this bitter extract, which today we know as quinine, back to Europe, where it became the treatment of choice for malaria. And here's the thing, quinine didn't just treat malaria, it could also prevent it. The problem was that it didn't taste very good, so British officers in India mixed their quinine powder with water, sugar, lime, and gin, and voila, the gin and tonic was born. Cheers. Ooh, that's good. The next big malaria milestone came in 1894, when British scientist Sir Ronald Ross made a critical discovery. Malaria was caused by a tiny single-celled parasite called plasmodium living inside the mosquito. Although most mosquito species don't carry or transmit the malaria parasite, it's incredibly important to study the behavior and the biology of the handful that do. This is one of our best approaches to preventing malaria transmission. The Institute for Disease Modeling is one of the many places looking at how understanding mosquitoes can help tackle this complex disease. I personally find it incredible that such a tiny animal is world's most dangerous predator. Yeah, it is pretty amazing. You know, it's only about this big, but they're very sneaky, very persistent, and they're also very adaptable. It's really important to understand mosquitoes, like if you were a detective solving a murder case, you would want to understand the killer. So then when we fight malaria, what's our target? Do we kill the mosquito or the parasite that lives inside, or both? During World War II, the U.S. went with kill the mosquitoes. The United States was declared malaria-free in 1951. What started as the Office for Malaria Control in War Areas turned into the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, which these days tackles all sorts of other diseases and health emergencies. But the brute force tactics that made North America and Europe largely malaria-free weren't as easy to implement in the rest of the world. And both the parasite and the mosquito, they don't take losing easily. Today, the fight to eradicate malaria means disrupting the transmission of the plasmodium parasite. But how do we outsmart the parasite before it outsmarts us? It's simple, just do the math. Malaria is a pretty complicated disease and math provides a way of incorporating everything that we know into one unified description. And then we can put it in the computer and the computer model helps us understand uh, various different components. And make predictions. Exactly. We can test those hypotheses in the computer then they can be implemented to much greater success. It saves us a lot of time and a lot of wasted effort. And money too. Alongside the math, we've also got new and better tools to help us in our quest. Lab coats, personal protective equipment. That's how you know science is about to happen. <laughs> Let's go. Here we have some examples of our rapid diagnostic tests. So you can see it's just this little device. Yep. And you put a little blood sample there. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. about 15 minutes later, you'll get a line that shows up that indicates whether you have malaria or not. It's just like a pregnancy test, basically. It's very much like a pregnancy test. It's 
very easy to read. As you can see, it's very small and very light, so it's easy to get these to hard to reach places. It's incredible that you can get so much information from such a small test. It truly is. Yes, science has helped us develop better drugs, bed nets, and tools to detect, treat, prevent, and in many cases, eliminate malaria. And the math, gathering, transmitting, and interpreting good data has let us better target our work. But getting to the end game with malaria also needs something as old as us. Sheer human effort, reaching the hardest hit people in hard to reach places with the right treatment at the right time. Science, math, and logistics. If we get all three right, we might just defeat malaria once and for all. Thank you.